Hey ladies, good evening, good evening. Thought I'd mix it up again today. Oh, coming on for my second week of live streams and I am so glad to be jumping on with you guys here. I actually missed having you on, I missed being here. Um, say hello to all of you guys joining on live. Hi Carolyn, good to see you again. So this weekend I took a little break. I went up into the mountains and just completely got to soak up some fresh, crisp air. It is starting to get really cold here in the Pacific Northwest. It actually started snowing and I am like just so thrilled to be kind of in more of the snowy atmosphere and the, the cold wintry weather. Wherever you guys are, I hope you're doing well. I hope those of you who are in lockdown are managing okay. Please let me know how you're doing in regards to that. Um, but I wanted to really come on here and talk about a whole nother concept. I was as posting about this today, and I think it's really important to just kind of unpack it a little bit and, and talk through it a little bit. Um, the post that I put up was talking about, are you giving yourself discounts? Are you giving people discounts on yourself? Um, because when you have self-respect and you have self-worth, you don't give discounts. And I just love this concept and this idea because really, it, it happens so easily. It happens so easily where we start to fall victim to giving people um, discounts on our self-worth, especially when we really want it to work and we want to make something happen. So when we're in a relationship and we're finding ourselves getting attracted to someone and we're saying, oh my God, this guy checks all the boxes. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. I want these things to this to happen, to move forward. It can be really easy to start to make sacrifices for ourself and sacrifices on our own time, sacrifices on our needs, sacrifices on our priorities. Give me some thumbs up, some likes if this is you, if this has resonated or if you've noticed this with somebody else in your life where they start out being this strong, powerful, independent person and then you notice yourself or you notice them start to just kind of like dwindle. A little bit right and settle or dim that shine a little bit in who they used to be to make excuses to make sacrifices for this other person and I see this happen a lot in relationships with with someone that we want to build a partnership with because we get into this place of scarcity where we do not want to lose this person right we're like oh my god finally I found someone that I actually could be the one that seems so right and we start saying, okay, well, if, you know, if he doesn't like the way I look, then maybe I'll change the way I look. And if he doesn't like the way I dress, then I'm change the way I dress and my hair and my makeup and my everything's right. Um, and it starts out with like the smallest little things. It starts out with just like a little comment or maybe it's even something like he's just not respecting your time, right? He's not sticking to his his commitments of his word of you know showing up on time or um, or following through on plans these things that can seem like eh, it's not a big deal I don't want to be crazy I don't want to be you know um, I don't want to be a bitch right so let me just let, let it be or let me just kind of make some adjustments to appease him in the situation and I just want to really talk to this and bring this up and say, no, like this is a red flag. This is something to really be aware of because when we start to do this in little ways, we are giving away pieces of ourself. And when we start to give away pieces of ourself, this is when we can start to fall into codependent relationships with others. And I've, I've noticed this happen even early on when I was dating, you know, Spencer didn't really like patterns. He didn't like when I wore patterns. And so for a really long time, I didn't wear patterned clothes, you know, like that cheetah dress I was wearing the other day, like, no, he, he, he still hates it. But you know what, like old me would have not bought that dress because of the fact that he didn't like cheetah print. And me now is saying, no, you know what? I'm gonna buy cheetah print because it looks good on me, because I enjoy it, because it makes me feel frisky and fun and wild, right? And it's, it's that distinction where I, I remember even being in the past and being like, oh, it's not a big deal. Like, I don't need to wear cheetah print. I, patterns aren't that big of a deal for me, right? But it's these things that start to compound on, on themselves over and over and over again. And then one day you wake up and you realize, wait a second, like this, I'm not even the person that I used to be anymore. What happened? Who am I? What's wrong? Where did I go, right? 
And that's when we get into trouble. That's when it's really, really hard and where we end up losing ourselves into relationships. And that's where we actually have to like pull back and re-identify who we actually are, right? What our actual identity is and how to show up in relationships for the future. And it's much harder to backpedal and pull back and reignite that identity of who you are with the person in front of you than it is to just own that identity of who you are first and say, take it or leave it. This is who I am. This is what I put up with. This is what I don't put up with. And make sure that that person in front of you can really own and love you for you and not their version of you. Okay? Drop in some tough love here today, tonight. Um, because it's just something that I think is just really, really needed to be brought to the awareness and, and continue to be aware over time because it can be such a slippery slope to start to slide down. And feel free to type in the chat box if you have anything that you want me to talk through on this concept or anything you want me to elaborate on or any specific questions that you have about this concept. Um, because it can be really easy to fall victim to it and not realize it and then go, oh crap, like, shoot, am I actually starting to give discounts on myself, right, for this person? And <clears throat> I think this can also go both ways. This can really also fall into the trap of us really putting those expectations on somebody else, right? Oh, you like this? Well, mm, I'm not really a big fan of that, so you might need to change that. Or, you know, ooh, you know, you like sports. Yeah, well, I'm not really a big sports fan, so I'm not. You, you can't watch your sports on Sunday. That's not going to fly for me, right? There's it's such a fine balance between allowing people to be who they are, but then also having needs and boundaries and priorities of your own. And it's the beautiful matching here of how do we actually find that balance, right? <laughs> Between not changing a person, but also not changing ourself, but then also finding someone that matches both, right? So before you go running for the hills and go, well, F that to you, like, <laughs> where in the world am I supposed to find someone like that? I'm not here to stress you out at all. I'm here to really inspire you on this, right? Because it comes back to the place of personal empowerment. It comes back to the place of first and foremost checking and making sure that you actually know who you are, know what your needs and preferences and priorities and, and, and things that light you up are, right? I didn't even know that I liked cheetah print and patterned clothing until I realized that or thought that I couldn't wear it, right? And I had to really communicate that to Spence and say, hey, I know you're not a big fan of the cheetah print. I know you tease me about, you know, when I wear patterns and flowery clothes, but this makes me feel like a woman. This makes me feel wild. This makes me feel fully expressed, right? So when we start to take that back and we start to really own that in who we are as these expressions of our self-identity, we get to really open ourselves up to being our most fully expressed versions of ourselves. And when we then say, you can take that or leave that, right? If you don't like that, like really that's up to you to decide, can you live with this or not, right? And if they can't live with that, that's, that, that's on them. And it's really their loss because regardless of what it is, I'm using a cheetah print dress, which is probably the like most su superficial of the things, right? Obviously it can go a lot deeper than this. But regardless, when you really own the fact that you are who you are, and these are the qualities and these are the things that make you you. Maybe you have a really crazy weird, like, you know, habit or, or hobby. Um, oh, actually, I can talk about this one too. <laughs> Last night, I was doing some art and I was drawing some, don't even ask me what I was drawing. I was just testing it out and I was just playing with patterns and weird, it came out looking really weird. And Spence looks over at me, he's like, what are you drawing? You know, and I'm like, I don't know and I don't care and I'm owning it, right? And he was able to smile and appreciate that of me. However, if I was starting to get into this place of second guessing myself or needing to feel like I needed to be this perfect artist or this perfect person for him, it just completely shifts the, the, the dynamics of the relationship, right? Where he starts to see me as being someone that is less than, that isn't able to own themselves as a full whole being, who has to seek approval and seek validation in that person to make sure that they can feel content within the relationship, 
right? And I just want to take a sledgehammer and go, no, 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 right? So first it's owning and being excited the fact that you have unique hobbies and quirky talents and fun, unique ideas and all those kinds of things and owning that as a fully expressed version of you. And then the second part of it is making sure that you're not dimming that part of you to make this other person happy or putting those same expectations on them that they need to dim parts of themselves to make you happy in return. So I'm going to pause for a second because I see some beautiful questions coming in. Oh, Karima, good to see you. Yes, so Karima says, my guy doesn't like me to wear lipstick because he thinks I would look better without it. Ah, yep, this is exactly what I'm talking about. And he doesn't want it on his lips. Oh my gosh, and how does it feel when you hear this, Karima? I told him my dad tried this with my mom and it didn't work out for him at all. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't. And this is one of those things, kind of like the cheetah dress, right? Where it's, it seems superficial, it seems like something like, ah, oh, maybe I should change, maybe I can do without that. But is that really what you want? Do you want to be the kind of woman that changes herself, even in the little ways, by like changing lipstick or not wearing lipstick because of what a guy wants, right? So there's a lot of self-empowerment talk coming through here, and it's important to own that, right? And, and maybe it's you don't wear a certain kind of lipstick because it gets on his, on his skin or stains his lips or whatever. You know, maybe you can make some adjustments on that. Maybe you don't wear quite as vibrant lipstick if, you know, if he likes more of the natural look with you. But just making sure that it still feels in alignment with who you are as a woman and not losing that power within yourself. Um, but then I also want to just bring it back to the other side of it, right? Because I'm all about the women's empowerment here, obviously, right? We got to own this power of being a woman, but we have to make sure that we're doing it in a way that is not pushing men away either, right? Because the whole, the other, whole other part of this is the reason that we're dimming ourselves or sacrificing these parts of ourselves is because we're afraid that if we don't, we're going to lose them. And that's really the other part of this is making sure that we're not falling into that scarcity trap of worrying that there are no other men that are going to love us, right? And no other men that are going to be out there that will, would accept me in my cheetah print or Karima with her hot, awesome, bright lipstick, right? Making sure that we're really tapping back into that place of abundance within our heart and knowing, you know what? I'm going to own who I am. I'm going to express who I am. I'm going to respect and honor who I am. I'm not going to be making discounts on my self-worth. And from that place, I know that the right man is going to naturally harmonize with that energy, right? Because when we start owning our whole self in completion with who we are as a whole complete whole sphere, we can't help but attract somebody else who also honors that within themselves and within their own partner. Okay, I'm going to say that again. When we start to honor our full self-worth, self-value in who we are as a whole sphere, we cannot help but attract another partner who is also in that way. Which means that if you're finding someone who is making all those little mini criticisms and making all those little snide comments or just not following through on his word, not giving you the respect that you deserve and that you know you would not put up with from any other person if it wasn't this just gorgeously hot man that you want to make it work with, right? <laughs> if you weren't sacrificing yourself in those ways and you knew that you were able to stay in this place and attract that man in, oh, I totally lost my train of thought here. I'm going to try and pull it back around. He's going to, the lower guy's going to vibrate himself out. He's going to just, you can say, thank you and goodbye, right? He's going to vibrate himself out and the new man that is able to meet you in that space is going to be able to meet and vibrate back in and fill that void. And that's how the law of attraction works. That's how manifestation works. And that is the principles of all the work that I teach as well in terms of really calling in that high vibe, high value king. It really all has to start with within you and how you continue to own and show up in the relationship. So it's just in the distinction here, it's about how you communicate your needs, your preferences, who you are, your self-expression, right? Because if we're coming into the self-expression saying, well, F you, man, like this is who I am and if you can't deal with it, leave, right? That comes out as being like psh, spikes, crazy spikes that nobody really wants to be on the receiving end of because it's kind of harsh, right? 
if a girlfriend's being like, well, fuck you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think I can cuss on here. F you girl, right? Like, don't be telling me how to act. Don't be telling me how to walk and how to, you know, dress and how to look. That's not going to come off very well on you, but you are going to respect her a lot more in the process of it. So this is about still keeping the respect, still owning that part about you, but also just making sure that you're doing it still from a place of love, right? Still doing it from a place of compassion. Saying, you know what? I, I hear you. I hear you, Spence, that you're not a fan of the patterns. You're not a fan of the cheetah dress. But this is something that makes me feel like me. This is something that makes me feel alive. This makes me feel fully expressed in who I am. And I love that about me. And I really hope that that's something that you can come to love about me too. And if it's not something that you can come to love about me, I don't know if this is going to work because I don't want to change this about me, right? This is who I am. And this is how you get to fall in love with me. Ooh. Oof! Does that not just make someone want to go, ooh, scoop you up and kiss you? Yes, right? And if they don't want to do that, then obviously that's a bigger sign that this is probably not the right thing. So, coming back for it. Okay, Kareem is laughing at me. <laughs> Good. She says, I don't want to adjust. Don't want to, uh, only don't wear the super glittery stuff because it's really hard to get off. Yeah, glitter is probably one of those things to save for special occasions. Yeah. <laughs> Victoria says, I used to be that way as well. Victoria, I would love to hear what were some of the things that you used to sacrifice and used to discount about yourself um, that you've changed? Because um, you said you used to be that way. So that's wonderful to hear. Yes, beautiful. Amanda's on. Love it, love it. You're laughing at me. I know, I know. I'm totally having fun tonight. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, I'm glad that this is resonating. I'm glad this is hitting home for you, ladies. If you've not listened to the Megan Trainer song called No, um, it's hilarious and I love it. And it always gets me pepped up and it gets me just like so in the zone where she's just like singing like, you know, all these guys are coming towards her like, what's your number? What's your sign? What's your phone number? And she's just like, no, 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 no. Um, it always gets me in that kind of sassy attitude of like, yeah, forget that. No. Yeah. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. Uh, Victoria says, I used to be mean to my boyfriend and baby daddy. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I know because, and it's easy to do. We get into that anger. We get, and I, ta I was talking about anger a little bit last time, but we get into these, you know, angry kind of protective defensive modes when people disrespect us because we don't want to be disrespected, right? And so our way of coping with that, if we're not aware of how to do it in a, ha in a healthy way is to just kind of lash out, say, oh, you're going to disrespect me? Well, I'm going to disrespect you, right? And that's kind of sinking down into that lower vibration level. And that's not what we're about, right? As high value queens, we are up here. We are conveying this essence of regalness, of queenly essence, of goddess light and love and compassion. And from that place, we get to be magnetic, compassionate, and much more respectful in the way that we approach all relationships. Yeah, Victoria says, I would always tell him that I could do it without him. I'm surprised he is still here. <laughs> but I've realized, um, I've realized this and now I'm able to let myself be me and let him be him. Good, good. Yeah, men put up with a lot. <laughs> They really put up with a lot with us, our poor men. We are, we can be really crazy sometimes, but regardless of that, it's important to just honor ourselves when we do have those slip ups and just respect, give them the respect, right? Give ourselves the respect and not let anyone dip in the energy of respect, right? And if you're starting to feel yourself getting in that place of feeling disrespected, check in with yourself, reach out to me, talk to a friend, you know, make sure that you're getting to the truth here before you get into the reactionary of the moment with the emotions that come into it. Beautiful. All righty. Loving this, loving this. Um, well, I'm going to jump off for today, but great to see you guys on here. I will be back on tomorrow with more juicy goodies. And um, I've got a lot of fun, special stuff in the works for you. I'm going to be announcing it. I've got a special Black Friday deal I don't know, that sounds really salesy, but I'm doing it for Black Friday because apparently that's the day when everyone's out shopping, right? And then looking for deals. Anyways, I've got something really juicy and exciting coming in the next few weeks for my whole community. It's gonna be unlike anything I've ever put out before. So just stay tuned to the next few months, I'm gonna be, or next few weeks, I'm gonna be starting to talk about it. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna leave you with that. Have a lovely evening, Mwah! and I'll talk with you tomorrow.